Greatest Cards of All Time, podcast number 27. Tyrus, Raymond, Cobb. One of the all time, I mean, does he need an introduction? I guess so. AL MVP in 1911, does that ring a bell? This is insane. This is a man where I'm embarrassed to give an introduction of, actually. One of the all time greats legends of the sport would the game even be close to the same as it is today without this man making his contribution to baseball he definitely had an impact i will say that for sure so 22 seasons with detroit and most of that as a player out in the outfield and some of that as the team's manager too so you want to talk about a full contribution to a team this man really showed up and did his job and did it really well and it shows in the statistics as we're about to go over and how about some beautiful cards to look at too well the card card's very cool um I think in a minute here we'll go over some details on the the yeah. card and the yes. series. But to dive a little bit into Ty Cobb and his career, yeah, you're right. Um, there's there's a lot you can say about him uh, as far as some of the stats that actually stand out. Obviously, the batting average is the most significant thing. He still has the highest uh, career batting average in Major League Baseball at 366. That's crazy, right? Yeah, that that's pretty significant. Um, and the thing was, until recently, or you know, over the years, his some of his stats have been beaten. But for a long time, he was in the top in almost all of the categories in offense. We're talking batting average, on base percentage, slugging percentage, and if you look through the years that he actually played, he dominated and and was number one in a lot of those categories in every single year that he played. So he was a very dominant player. Uh, there's a lot you can say about him. What 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 do you have to say about what's or I guess what stands out to you when you think about Ty Cobb and his career? What really jumps out at you i think the most alarming thing that stands out to me when it comes to ty cobb's career is that batting average that you're talking about it's really hard to hold a batting average like that that high you don't even see those in a single season nowadays maybe every once in a while but right. not consistently so that's really what stands out to me and he played a long time too right I and think he, played he played a long time against some really good players to 1928 too. so i mean that was a long career he ended up having 4,189 hits. You know, people talk about hitting that 3,000 hit mark. He had 4,189 hits, although, actually, I wasn't going to go there, but that is actually an asterisk. Um, and so if you would look at his Hall of Fame plaque, they'll actually have two more hits listed on there, and they're not going to change that. So... Not not a huge deal, but it did end up having an impact when Pete Rose ended up hitting more, having more hits than Ty Cobb. It was when did he actually beat the real record for total hits? You know, a lot of people think it was when he had 4,193 hits, but actually it should have been when Pete Rose had 4,190 hits. So, you know, big picture it's not a huge deal but it's my understanding that that would have been another batting title that Ty Cobb actually would not have won because it was so close between him and first when that one particular year where they I think they double counted a double header or something like that where they gave him two extra hits slightly better batting average than who took second I, at this point I, I can't recall who that was but you know, that's something to point out. It's not a big deal, but it is interesting that, you know, baseball reference changed the number of hits and some other uh, prominent organizations basically state that he had 4,189, but... Always changing the rules. Hall of baseball. Fame. Well, you know, they basically said, you know, it's it's been too long. There's there's a, a statute of limitations on how long you can come back and change the status, something like that. So, again, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just something to point out. As far as runs, he also was number one in runs for a long time until Ricky Henderson passed him. So, you know, that's another cool thing about Ty Cobb is, you know, he basically did it all. He had, he scored runs, he had a batting average, 
Um, I love players like that. Yeah, all around great baseball players, guys you want on your team, producing any way possible. Just get on base, get around, move players over. Whatever you're contributing to the team, do it to the best of your abilities. And Ty Cobb exemplified that. Ty Cobb, and then you know to talk about his career and the fact he was in, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1936, which was the first the inaugural Hall of Fame induction. So how cool was, is that? Yeah, I, I I have here he received 226. Or, I'm sorry, 222 out of the 226 That's right. votes that were possible that year in the inaugural Baseball Hall of Fame ballot. And no other player got more than that until Tom Seaver in 1992. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Ty Cobb, what a legend. It was almost unanimous. Yeah, exactly. So, people talk about not liking Ty Cobb or what have you. And I think that's kind of fake news. Like you said, he was he got the most votes out of anybody that was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1936. So that included Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, Christy Mathewson, Babe Ruth, and Honus Wagner. And to act like Ty Cobb wasn't popular or people hated him or whatever, I mean, maybe you could say they were just discounting his personality or something and they voted for him just based off of his game. But again, I think that's kind of all fake news. I do not think he was as hated as a lot of people like to say um it's kind of famous in the field of dreams um that movie where uh you know they acted like you know everybody else was there but ty cobb was an asshole so so nobody watched him. <laughs> you know that was actually in the movie I, I i don't think that's true um i don't think he's racist i think a lot of that stuff is actually to kind of sell newspapers and sell and sell books and what have you. Yeah, so, maybe during that time. Yeah, ninety eight point two percent of that inaugural Hall of Fame vote on that uh, opening ballot. So I mean, if you if these players are around this man, they know this gentleman, and um, certainly he wouldn't have garnered ninety eight point two percent of that total inaugural Hall of Fame ballot vote if he was uh, anything short of a stand up human being. I wouldn't think so. I mean, he was obviously aggressive when he played. He, you know, he kind of the, he came up with something called a men mental hazard. He was definitely a different player. He was not like your typical player out there just going out there to have a good time. He was going out there to win. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt about that. But he wasn't this evil guy that everybody tries to paint him. He didn't go out there and try to spike every single person at the bases. If you gave him a spot to actually to, to slide into, he, he would prefer to try to do that. He's trying to avoid a tag. He's not trying to spike people. And he would get spiked himself sliding into bases when people would come down on him. So, you know, that was all exaggerated. Hey, man, um, that's a physical sport out there. It was. And, you know, it was a different time. And like I said, you know, he kind of coined this thing mental hazard. He definitely came out there with a mental game. He came out there to try to distract people. He came out there with that mentality, which was a little bit different for the time. But to think about modern sports right now, that's how everybody plays. Everybody's got the mind game. Everybody's doing things like that. It's just, it and was edge something to win. new at the yeah. time. Right. He, he, that was the thing. He was competitive and he didn't want to lose. Born in 1886 in Georgia, known as the Georgia Peach. And he died in Georgia as well as 70 years young. I'm sorry, 74 years young, um, born and raised in Georgia, died in Georgia, and I think uh, we should take a good look at these T201s. 1911 T201 Mecca Cigarette Double Fold Baseball Cards featuring Ty Cobb. Actually, this card is featuring two players, and that's hence the name double folds so there yeah. are actually 50 cards in the set but 100 players because there are two players on each card something interesting about this set is actually you know the double folds you can actually see it when you look at this it's designed to be folded over so you can have basically two players on one card so sure yeah kind of unique feature these were cigarette pack cards these were actually in the mecca 
uh, cigarettes, which was actually a United States company as far as the cigarette company. One other thing that's very unique is this was, I think, the first set that actually had stats on the card. I love the printing. Right away when you turn it over and look at it, I love the printing. I love the font. I love the layout. It looks of the time Here's the also. Thing. No really other cards clean. had this. Uh, that, I'm telling you, this is the first of, That's I crazy. believe, any set that actually had stats. At the time when they were making cards in 1911, it was basically all advertising. So, yes, you would have a player, you would have a picture, but if there was something on the back, it wasn't advertising on the back. It yeah. wasn't actually stats. That's what's very unique about this. I mean, it still does have the Mecca cigarettes on the bottom. Of course. As, yeah. as, as a minor advertising. Perfect small satisfaction. <laughs> Doctor approved or whatever they Doctor. say. But um, there are actually stats on here for both players. And this is the I believe this is the first time any set actually had stats on the card. That is something that's actually pretty cool, and to me, that that's under that's an underappreciated aspect of the set. There you go, Tyrus R. Cobb, literally a Ty Cobb. I'm kind of blown away that we're holding this and looking at this. You know, well, nice to have in the collection. It's super cool. It's, it's not something the best to Ty talk Cobb. about. Not the best Ty Cobb, but an old Ty Cobb Mecca right. cigarettes. This I mean, is cool. These double folds are really cool. Cool. They're both on the same team, so you can see you've got, you know, you got Ty Cobb. And what it states on the top of the card, it states their name and the city that they play for. Sure, yeah. And and the league, yeah. And the league. American League. Both on the same team. These are both uh, both Detroit players. So um, How cool are those pictures, though? It's kind of a pastel, lighter color, peach background. I really enjoy them. I like it. It's of the time, and it's so crisp, clean, clear as day what you're looking at. Hey, I look like at the both glove. these pictures, front and back of the double folds. Look at the glove. Look at the hat. I mean, that is just something you don't see. Those gloves are I love nothing these cards, like yeah. you see with players right now. Compare that glove to, like, those rock-hard gloves that these players use yeah. right now. I mean, this is And just... the size, yeah. It's yeah, and half the size, the size maybe. Uh, yeah, probably even... Yeah, even more significant than that. So, very cool. Um, two Hall of Famers. That's another thing two that Hall I think Hall of Famers on the same card. Yeah, thanks for pointing that Sam out. Sam Crawford, super important, is a Hall of Famer. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1957 by the uh, Veterans Committee. His career WAR is actually 75.3. Just to compare that to Ty Cobb and some other players, I'm just going to list off the top six right now. Babe Ruth, career war, 183.1. One of the first inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1936. Walter Johnson, number two, at 164.9. Also inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1936. Then you have Cy Young, 163.6. Barry Bonds at 162.8, Willie Mays at 156.1, and Ty Cobb at 151.5, who obviously also was inducted into the inaugural Hall of Fame in 1936. So Ty Cobb at 151.5, just absolutely dominant, amazing player, one of the best ever. Sam Crawford is also a Hall of Famer and a great player. Just under 3,000 hits at 2,961 hits, but he's almost exactly one half of the career war of Ty Cobb. And that's no disrespect to Sam Crawford. I think it's just more of an acknowledgement or just something to point out of how dominant Ty Cobb really was. It's pretty cool. They have two Hall of Famers that were actually played together for several years. One other thing I just wanted to point out about Sam Crawford. We pointed this out about Ty Cobb, who he still has the all-time uh, batting average leader at uh, 366. Sam Crawford actually still has the league lead in triples, career triples at 309. And there were several different years, uh, I think six different seasons throughout his career where he led the league in triples. So... You know, during the dead ball era, that was kind of a significant thing. They weren't hitting home runs. He was hitting balls into gaps. He was fast. He was getting triples. Six different times he led 
um, the league in in triples. And one other thing about about Sam, you didn't have all stars during this time. He played in uh, 1899 through 1917. They didn't actually have all star teams. So to think or look at like what designated somebody a great player or a very one of the best players is did they get MVP votes? And actually, he re four different years he received MVP votes. And I'm not positive on this, so you know if somebody wants to double check me, they can. But I believe Ty Cobb received. We need a graphic. Is that maybe what you're we need a graphic? Let's do a graphic. How many years did Ty Cobb actually receive MVP votes? In how many years did Sam Crawford receive MVP Cue votes? Cue the graphic. I think they're the same. I think four years for Sam Crawford. I believe four different years for, for Tyrus Cobb. I could be wrong at that. Let's, let's cue those graphics and uh, maybe I'm right. Now, what I do want to talk about how good these cards look in these slabs. They happen to be SGCs. Both of them are graded 30s. You know, obviously both of them are 1911 T201 Mecca Cigarette, uh, Crawford Cobb, Double Folds. Beautiful, beautiful cards. But uh, can you tell us about the 30 grading? What is that? You know, 30? I know they're SGC2s is what I would call in good condition, as these slabs say. They do look great in tuxedos. I always love it, but it's, uh, that's, it's, that's, that it's not something that they use anymore. I know yeah. it's something that they used to use, and honestly, I'm not sure why they put 30 and then good in two. So SGC twos, they're both very different in my opinion. You've got one that looks like super clean and more pristine. The corners look nicer. The service, the surface looks nicer. But when you flip it over and you look on the back, some card loss there. It's got some card loss. Some paper so loss. So yeah. paper loss, you know. But everything else looks beautiful. And then you look on the other one, it definitely has more wear and tear. Yeah, maybe not as crisp, yeah, but some corn. natural wear and tear. Right. Some 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 wear down on the edges and corners. Right. But it is all in one piece, and it's True. kind of. And, uh, and here's the thing about the fold. It's kind of so, a decent shape, actually. Normally, you get absolutely crushed if there's a fold in your card. They actually do take into consideration the fact that these cards were designed to be folded. So sure, yeah. they don't I give appreciate you, that. I they, like that. They should. I mean, again, this card came folded when you actually got it. If you're going to knock somebody and say it's not in good shape, it... It was folded when they got the card out of a cigarette pack. So right. you have to take that into consideration. <laughs> folded when received. In a cigarette pack, okay? <laughs> when I opened it. But, um, you know, if there's excess damage or paper loss or things like that. So, you know, you can see on this one, it almost looks like it wasn't folded. In the other one, it's got like these rounded corners kind of where it was folded. I don't know if that's just a different This day and age when collecting sports cards, you really have to be appreciative of that. Uh, like you said, they came in cigarette packs and folded already. So what are you going to do? You're going to unfold it, fold it, throw it in the trash, cut them up. Right. They are not treated like fresh sports packs opening those up ripping those open right. uh put it right. in a penny sleeve right away no these came out no. of cigarette packs they weren't treated as you know a collectible item that would no. that would be extra garbage is what it is exactly. in your cigarette pack so just to kind of refresh on the set it's this is the 1911 t201 mecca double folds there are 50 different cards but 100 players most of the sets, not all of the sets, most of the sets were same team, two different players, not all of them. This is not the only set that had the folding. Uh, in 1955, Top, Tops came out with a, a set that was called a double header. They actually used the same similar te technology or concept, I would say, where they had two different players on one card. But again, this is the first set that I know of that actually had stats on the back of the card. That is something that I think is fairly significant. And if that is true, you know, somebody point me out, tell me I'm wrong, show me I'm wrong in the comments below. 
you know, did any other set actually have player stats before 1911? And if, in fact, this is the first set that actually had player stats That's on the card, that is something significant and very cool. And the fact that there are two Hall of Famers on one card... You that's know, something. That's cool. It takes a little bit away from the Ty Cobb with Ty Cobb being on the back of the card. I cannot deny that. That definitely takes something away from it. But um, you you have another Hall of Famer on the front, and it is still a Ty Cobb. You can see his stats on the back. You can see his picture on the back. I I really I really love these old cards. Some of my fa- this is these two cards are probably my two favorite cards. 